Ace of Clay here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another sculpting video. If you're new here, I'm a sculptor and every week I make a new sculpture. And in today's video, I'm sculpting a necromancer. Now this necromancer character that I'm making is part of my mutant universe. You can check out the playlist below if you're not familiar with that. In a nutshell, it is a series of characters and stories that I've been developing over the past year. And if you want to check that out, again, it is linked in the description box below. So this necromancer character that I'm making today, he brings people back from the dead. He's a simpler character, but I think he turned out really cool and I go into his entire backstory and lore throughout this entire video so make sure you watch the whole thing so you don't miss anything. And then before we get started, right now through the end of this month you can see the Seamstress, Pretzel the Clown, and Otto the Raccoon Guide in person at My Pops Comics and Collectibles in Shelby Township, Michigan. And then if you mention this being the reason for your visit you will receive a free Ice Cream Man collectible card. Again, they're there for this month only so if you want to see them in person and you're in the area I hope you can stop by. You might even see me there. And now without further ado, Let's get sculpting. All right, let's get started. I've got my aluminum wire here and I'm gonna start shaping out the armature. All the tools and materials that I use in this video are listed in the description box below along with my affiliate links if you wanna purchase anything. And I'm just gonna tie the two sides together like this because he's gonna be wearing long robes. Then we're gonna attach the arms with another piece of wire. And let's use some aluminum foil to start bulking out those robes. Then to finish off the underlying structure of the robes, I'm going to use some Super Sculpey Ultralight on top of that foil. This is going to give me a nice, smooth surface to add my final layer of clay later on. Now I'm just going to poke in another piece of wire for the neck and our armature is ready to bake. And once that's baked and completely cooled down, it's nice and solid. Let's go ahead and start adding our final layer of clay. I'm using Super Sculpey Original for this project and I got these nice even sheets by rolling it through my pasta maker on the thickest setting. Just want to get everything nice and smooth and then start adding some snakes of clay to create folds and wrinkles in the robes. I'm going to cover the entire surface in wrinkles so it looks like nice flowy fabric. The Necromancer is the first wizard character in the Mutant Universe, using his powers to bring the dead back to life. But it's not without a catch. go his robes are done now let's go ahead and start working on his head I'm gonna ball up a piece of aluminum foil for the core and then cover this in clay now for the look of this guy I want it to be a human skull sort of morphing into like a bird beak or plague doctor type mask so I'm going ahead and making the skull part first marking out where I want the eyes and the nose and then I'm gonna add another piece of wire to support that big beak that I was just talking about And then to create the beak, I just rolled out a snake of clay that tapered at one end and sort of pinched it into the shape that I want. And I'm just adding it to that wire, making sure the edges are nice and sharp. And then we can start detailing the face, starting with the eye sockets. Now you can see where I'm going with this.
Now I just want to use my Excel blade to sharpen those edges even more. Use code ASAClay at ExcelBlades.com to save 15% on your purchase. Now using my explorer tool, I want to add some cracks to the skull. I really like what this added. Couple more cracks on the beak and the head is done. Now as an accessory to this guy, I want to create two skulls that will sit on his shoulders. I'm just making the first skull here using the same process I did for his head, except these skulls won't have beaks. If you're killed by a mutant or some other way, the necromancer may appear to restore your life. It is not guaranteed that he will arrive, as he is very selective. If you happen to be brought back by him, there may be life in your mortal body again, but a piece of your soul will be missing, as he keeps it for himself to grow stronger. You are the same person, but something is off. At least you're alive again though, right? There we go, one skull down, one more to go. After making the other one off camera, looks pretty good, exactly what I want. Let's set those aside and start working on his arms. Now I want his arms to have really long drapey robes that match the fabric I've already created. So I'm gonna create these separate from the piece and then we're gonna add them on later. I'm doing the same thing I did with the other robes and just adding these snakes of clay and blending them into the surface and just layering them until I get the look that I want. And the first sleeve is done. Let's just kind of see what that's going to look like. Not bad. Now, before I go any further, I want to make his hands and his hands are actually going to be bird feet. So I'm going to make the armature for them like this, just attaching four pieces of wire together with another piece of wire. And I want to make sure both hands are the exact same size. So I'm going to make both of the armatures first before I start adding my clay. And there we go. Now I'll be using cosplay for the hands just because it stays flexible after it's baked and I'll be able to pose the fingers however I want. And I just want to cover all that armature with a little bit of cosplay. I want them to be nice and skinny looking, trim off any excess, and then just get these things covered, leaving a little bulbous tip at the end of each one. Now I want to start texturing the surface with my explorer tool and then go from there. And of course he's got to have some nice claws so I'm going to attach these with some bacon bond so they're nice and secure. Just like that. And there we go, we got our chicken foot. Let's make the other one off camera. And now that the other hand is done, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-bake these so I don't smash them when I add them to the piece. And then while those were baking, I went ahead and made the other sleeve off camera. And we're gonna attach the hands first by wrapping the wire around the arm wire. And we're going to start attaching the sleeves. I added a piece of aluminum foil underneath the clay just so it adds a little extra reinforcement. In the event of your death, the necromancer will appear hovering over your mortal body and begin speaking with your soul. He wants to know why he should bring you back. Do you have unfinished business? Do you have a family? What caused your death in the first place? After you have pled your case, the necromancer will disappear to make his decision. If he returns, you'll be brought back to life. And if not, then it just wasn't in your destiny.
Now for the folds and wrinkles on this part of the sleeve, I'm just gonna press in my cone shaper tool to add those just because I don't wanna really add any more bulk by putting on more snakes of clay. So we're just gonna create little indents and make all the wrinkles we want. I wasn't really sure if I wanted them on his shoulders like that or if I wanted them on his head stacked up, but I end up going with the shoulders like I had originally planned. Let's just refine things a little bit, and then I'm going to make a bunch of little skulls to string onto a necklace for him. A nice added detail. And these are essentially beads, so I'm going to poke a hole through the side. And when everything's done, it's time to bake. And once he's baked and completely cooled down, it's time for paint. The paints that I'll be using are Folk Art brand matte acrylics and war paints. We're going to start by painting the robes completely black. Alright, now let's start working on his head and those skulls. I'm going in with the color French Vanilla adding a couple coats of this, and then we can start adding a wash. The necromancer was born at the time of the entity, along with other wizards and magical beings. He separated himself from the entity, but is not entirely good as he acts on his own free will. And remember, he takes a part of your soul. He was never human and has been raising the dead since his inception. Now I just want to dab on a nice dark brown wash into all the nooks and crannies and just build it up here and there to create some dimension. Make it look really old. Now I just want to go in and paint the eye sockets and nose holes black. And we're going to go in with a nice dark gray color for his hands and then paint the nails black. And I just want to finish off the hands with some more of that dark brown wash. Now I want to bring out all those folds and wrinkles by dry brushing some lighter gray on the surface and I'm sort of just working in circular motions to give texture to the fabric and heighten the details. Now let's go ahead and pose his hands because they were driving me nuts just sticking straight out like that. And let's finish off our little skull beads for his necklace. Now I'm stringing them onto a piece of floral wire that I will later paint black and then we'll add it to his neck. The necromancer is only visible to the dead. In the living realms, he can be sensed but never seen. He glides along the ground and speaks in a strong, low voice. And that's the necromancer. Alright now, say it with me. And he's done! The Necromancer is complete. Let me know what you think of him in the comments.
lot of fun. I enjoyed making this character. I think he's very different than what I'm used to doing. I love the idea of the human skull sort of morphing into this beak plague doctor type look. I love all the little skulls. I love his little bird feet hands. And I think he's a cool character and he, and he brings something to the mutant universe. And I really hope you enjoyed his story. So let me know what you think of him in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Check me out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.